These are the 10 longest movies ever made. I wanna clarify right off the bat, these are only narrative films. So I swear, if I see one comment in here that says, what about logistics? Isn't that the longest movie ever made? I will probably reply and say, yes, you're right, but please read the room. Coming in at number 10, we have Hermius, book one, The Legend of the Lizard Princess, and has an official runtime of eight hours and 39 minutes. Written and directed by Lob Diaz, this movie is the odyssey of one man from his village to the city and back, a modern parable told with angry compassion. Lob Diaz is one of the most critically acclaimed Filipino filmmakers, and he's also one of the pioneers for the slow cinema movement, or should I say the slow cinema movie-ment? The genre of slow cinema is typically one with a lot of long takes, and it's known for its minimalistic elements and observational nature. So that's book one, but is there a book two? I've looked around and it's possible it was released in 2015 under the title The Legend of the Invisible Island, but I couldn't find anything else besides that. And spoiler alert, we will be hearing Lob Diaz's name pop up a few more times in this video, including in... Number nine, Death in the Land of Encantos. This movie was also directed by Lob Diaz and has a runtime of eight hours and 58 minutes. A Filipino poet returns home to witness the aftermath of the super typhoon. He wanders around the obliterated village, meeting old friends and lovers. Shooting this movie started as a spontaneous reaction after the natural disaster of Hurricane Durian. The three fictional characters hang out in the village of Padang, which Lav Diaz compared to Pompeii because the whole vicinity disappeared under landslides. Is this the last movie that Lav Diaz has in the top 10 of the longest movies ever made? Stay tuned. Taishi Ku West of the Tracks has a runtime of nine hours and 11 minutes. Filmed over a two year period between 1999 and 2001, it details the slow decline of a Chinese industrial district. Critics have called this one of the best and most important movies of the 2000s. Someone who saw a screening of this at the Vancouver Film Festival wrote on IMDb that, the cinematography was great, capturing the bleak world of this industrial based community. The camera seemed to be this invisible object moving around with brutal clarity and without any obvious opinion. This documentary was made by Wang Bing. He's known to try to remain as objective as possible by using little cuts and no music because within editing comes this inherent guidance from the filmmaker to the audience towards specific thoughts or feelings. So between his creative strategies and the long run times of his movies, it really allows the audience to sink into the world of the film and its subjects. Filmmaker Claude Landsman created Shoah, a nine and a half hour documentary about the Holocaust without using a single frame of archive footage. He captured an estimated 350 hours of footage, and it took about five years to edit. Shoa won critical acclaim and several prominent awards, including the BAFTA Award for Best Documentary. Some German interviewees were reluctant to talk and refused to be recorded, so he used a hidden camera. During one of these interviews, it was discovered that Landsman was secretly filming them and he was physically attacked. He was hospitalized for a month and charged by the authorities with unauthorized use of the German airwaves. The poster for the movie features Henrik Kukowski, a Polish railway worker who, from the ages of 20 to 21, worked on the trains to one of the death camps. Claude Landsman grew to like Gakowski and wrote in 1990 that he was different from the others. I have sympathy for him because he carries a truly open wound that does not heal. The film took 11 and a half years to complete and was plagued with financial problems, difficulties tracking down interviewees, and threats to Landsman's life. Since then, five other feature length films have been released just from the outtakes from Shoah. Evolution of a Filipino Family is a film by Lav Diaz that runs for 10 hours and 43 minutes. The movie observes the collapse and hopeful revival of a poor farming clan. A lot of it features the daily hardships and the manual labor required for the family to get by. It took 11 years to complete, with pre-production starting in December of 1993, the month I was born, all the way through until January of 2005. I was in fifth grade. Using only a shoestring budget, filming was only done when there was money and when the cast and crew were available. A video analysis that I really enjoyed enjoyed by Style is Substance speaks on its purposefully low budget and how the lack of technical flourishes lends to the living conditions of the poor farming clan. The audio quality of the movie is bad according to traditional movie standards, but this is all intentional as part of the project. And it also just emphasizes something that I've always believed that you don't need a big budget to tell a good story. Best fun fact about all of this is when this 10 and a half hour movie was screened at the Toronto Film Festival, it was scheduled with only one 10 minute intermission. How Yukon Moved the Mountains has a runtime of 12 hours and 43 minutes. It's a 1976 documentary that captures the last days of the Cultural Revolution in China. The film is looked at as an honest portrayal of a very major turning point in history. There's 12 chapters within this movie and each one acts as a short film, focusing on ordinary people from different parts of the country, such as a fishing village, a school, and a factory. I picked just a random chapter to check out at first and I found myself completely engrossed in this one segment at a school. It's this 
really endearing moment of a class-wide debate on whether one of the kids kicked a ball after the teacher said to stop, and it was kind of wholesome to watch. And because there's no added music and very minimal cuts, it really just felt like a moment in time that was mummified. And the whole doc is available on YouTube. There's a playlist for it cut up into chapters. Out One runs for 12 hours and 55 minutes. The plot follows the 1968 civil unrest in France, while a con artist and a deaf mute simultaneously stumble upon the remnants of a secret society. Out One? In One. Because I'm in. I wanna see this. You'd think that because it's 13 hours long, it must have taken a really long time to film, but it was actually shot in only six weeks. The first few hours of the movie act as more of a prologue because nothing really happens and the characters are only introduced. The storylines don't really begin until about three and a half hours into the movie. Because the director wanted to blur the lines a little bit between fiction and reality, some of the final takes have mistakes in them, such as flubbed lines of dialogue, visible shadows of camera equipment, and even extras just looking straight into the camera. It just seems like the holy grail of French New Wave. Screening the subtitled version of this movie in theaters proved to be a bit of a challenge because the subtitles aren't burned into the film print like most foreign movies. The subtitles would have to be projected from a computer in a separate stream, which has to be synced up with the film itself. And not a lot of theaters could meet that demand, especially for a movie that runs for 13 hours. So is the movie good? Yeah, people seem to like it. The Metacritic score has an 87 out of 100. There's a 100% approval rating for it on Rotten Tomatoes. And Out One also received 13 votes in the Sight and Sound Critics Poll for the greatest films ever made. There's also a shorter four hour version of the movie called Out One Spectre, which film writer Richard Rood said was a mind blowing experience. The cinema will never be the same and nor will I. I hope they make a sequel one day, Out Two, because I'm gonna be running out to the, th the theaters to see it. La Fleur from 2018 has a length of 808 minutes or 13 hours and 23 minutes and is considered the longest movie in the history of Argentine cinema. It's broken into six separate episodes connected only by an on-screen appearance by the director explaining the film's structure. The first four stories have a beginning but no end, the fifth one has a beginning and an end, and then the last one has an end but no beginning. And the six parts are all completely different from one another but they all have the same four actresses in them. So like the first episode is shot as a B-movie about researchers discovering a mummy and its curse. Another is a musical melodrama. Another one is about a secret society creating a potion for eternal life. Another is about a spy movie. LaFleur was shot over the course of 10 years with all of the actors working on other projects simultaneously. And the reviews are good. It has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes and basically all of the comments that I found of folks that have seen it said that they really like it. Resand the Journey has a runtime of 14 hours and 33 minutes. And until 2019, this was the longest cinematic film ever made. This documentary by Peter Watkins gives a global look at the impact of military use of nuclear technology and people's perception of it. The filmmaker asks ordinary people about their awareness of issues related to nuclear weapons, military spending, and poverty. Peter Watkins is considered a pioneer of docudrama, and there's also this interesting tidbit about him. John Lennon and Yoko Ono credit their peace campaigns back to a letter they got from Peter Watkins about how people in their position have a responsibility to use the media for world peace. This is an artist who obviously feels very passionately about these subjects. He wants to hammer world peace into your head until it gets through to you. And if the subject matter won't do it for you, the runtime of the journey definitely will. Amra Edka Cinema Banabo, also known by its English title, The Innocents, runs for 1,260 minutes or 21 hours. This is the longest cinematic film ever made. Made in black and white, the story of The Innocents revolves around a town where anti-independence activists once again rose to prominence after the Liberation War. A group of ordinary people started a revolution against this political and social decline with movies. Filming started in January of 2009 and was completed in 176 days over the course of nine years. And they worked with about 4,000 artists and crew members during the filming of this. And whoever wrote the IMDb storyline says that the film doesn't culminate. What do you mean it doesn't culminate? We have 21 hours to culminate. We can culminate. There's a four minute trailer for this on YouTube and it looks good. Some of the shots are stunning. The music is great. It's got a lot of emotion. And all of a sudden I found myself doing the math in my head like I've watched seasons of television shows longer than this in one weekend. So should I watch this? I couldn't find anywhere to watch it online, but I did reach out to the YouTube channel that had the trailer for it because they seem somehow connected to the movie. I'm waiting to hear back, but fingies crossed. 
If you wanna check out more videos like this from me, I recommend this video. I go down some pretty interesting rabbit holes about some pretty interesting movies. I'd love to give a quick shout out to all of my crew members. Thank you so much for being a part of my YouTube membership and funding my channel. And I also wanna give an individual shout out to my three producers this month, Clyde, Ronald, and Ashley. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more.